So in this video, we are going to look at how I can use Kaltura to host videos that I can use in the content that I create in Canvas. So as you can see here, I am in my dashboard and I'm going to go into one of the courses that I'm responsible for. So in this case, I'm going to pick the sample course that I've got over here. And as you can see, a blueprint has already been applied to this course. So the first step that I mentioned that because it's going to add a step for me that you may not have to undertake. So the first thing I want to do is over here on the left hand side, not the far left, but the course menu, if you will, on the left, you'll see there's a pages option. So I'm going to click on that pages option. Now, if you have a blueprint applied, you will get the blueprint will come up and you'll see a blue button up here that says view all pages. And if you have a blueprint applied, you will need to click on that view all pages so I can see all of the pages that are here. Now, if you're in a course where the blueprint hasn't been applied or hasn't been applied yet, when you click on pages, you'll automatically be able to see all of the pages that you have right away. So you won't have to go through that extra step. Now, once I am here, Basically, I'm going to go over here to the top right hand corner and you'll see that there's a pages plus or plus page button here, a blue button up here at the top. So I'm going to click on that and it allows me to create a page. So I'm going to create one that I'm going to, just going to call temporary for now. And then I'm going to come down here into my box and I'm going to add some text to introduce the video to the students. So essentially that text should be what pedagogically we would call an advanced organizer. So if you were, for example, showing this video in your class, there may be some things that you say to the students that would give them specific things to look for. You know, so there are four steps in this particular diagnostic procedure and I want to make sure that you are able to identify all four of them so watch for the four of them throughout the video or when the video starts you know when the presenter in the video starts to talk about X that's of particular importance to what we're doing here today so I want you to really focus in upon that material so that's the kind of text that you would put right there in that add some text to introduce the video to the students. So when I'm ready to import my video from Kaltura, or for that matter, if I haven't uploaded it yet, either or, basically just whenever I'm ready to basically put my video into this page, I'm going to, here in these two rows of buttons that you see here, the top ones are mostly formatting ones, and the bottom ones, there's some formatting ones here, but most of them are features that you can do in about almost a little bit better than halfway over. You'll see that there's one that looks like a sun and it's sort of yellow and blue and green and orange there. Um, and if you scroll over it, it'll say embed Kaltura Media. It's right after the YouTube one in your particular view. So if I click on that, it'll actually bring up Kaltura Media for me. So the first time that you open this, it may ask you to agree to a terms of service because Kaltura is a third party application, meaning it is a separate piece of software from Canvas itself. So the first time that you do it, and it only asks you to do it on the first time if it asks you at all. A lot of it depends upon whether or not you used it in Blackboard and the nature of your Kaltura license. So if you have been into Kaltura before, you may already have some videos here like I do. You can see the two that I have here. You may not. So this area down here may be completely blank and that's probably what will, it will look like for you uh, at least for the first time you log in. So if you are in that particular position and you're looking for your you want to upload your videos in here so we can embed them here now. What we're going to do is over here on the right hand side of this new box you will see an add new that uh, is available there and if I click on that it'll give me three options. So the one that we want to pick today if you've already got your video created somewhere else it was a recording from something or you did a screen capture or something like that it's going to be a media upload. 
If you actually just want to record a video of yourself right now looking at the camera, you can actually use the capture space, but I suspect most of you are going to be using the media upload. So let's look at that one. So I click on media upload and it gives me some information about, you know, what's the best way of sort of rendering my video and stuff like that. Um, but if you've already got your video created, it's too late to go in and, and do those kinds of things, but it's good information to know for future reference. So um, I'm going to click on choose a file to upload and you'll see it defaults directly to my desktop here. So I'm going to have to um, go into my account on my hard drive here and into my teaching folder and there's my folder for this course into the content folder and now let's see I think I have some videos here in session two sure um, actually I have the two that I've just uploaded So I think I have a video that I haven't uploaded here in session one, and there it is. So I'm going to upload this Clark 83 video, which was a, a video that I had created for the students prior to class uh, because they were supposed to read this Clark 83 article, and I was discussing it with them so that they would have a better understanding of it so that when they came to class, we would be able to have a better class discussion. So I'm going to click on open. Now, depending upon the browser that you're using, as well as the differences between a Mac and a PC, it may say OK here, it may also say select, or it could say open like mine does. But either way, you're going to click on whatever that option is, and you'll see it starts to upload here. And you can see the progress bar coming across, and we'll worry about this stuff on the bottom here in a second as this loads up. Um, but the first thing that you want to do is you'll notice the name that it gives it and this is a required feature, is the exact same as the file name. So you can see my file name is clark-1983.mp4. And so it transposed it just to Clark 83. So you probably want to change that to something a little bit more descriptive. So I'm just going to change it to a video of me discussing the important features of Clark 1983 and as you can see the video was finished being uploaded while I was doing that so you can see it went from blue to green and it tells me that my upload has been completed if you want to add in a description here you can um, it some depending upon how you embed it it may show up in your page, it may not. I tend not to use a description personally, but what I do tend to do is I do tend to use tags, and the specific tag I use is the tag for my course. So that way when I have a position where say two or three years from now, or even two or three semesters from now, I've got literally dozens of videos there in my Kaltura account. By using the course name as a tag, it helps me find just the specific videos for that course a lot easier if I wanted to go in and make changes to them or if I wanted to upload a newer version. So putting the course name and number in there as a tag is always a good idea. So and when I'm done I'm going to click save and it will save it and you'll see the green box appears here that says your changes have been saved and then I'm going to click on the back to browse and embed and that brings me back to my list here of all of the ones. So you can see there's a little difference here. And it's important to note this difference. Right now, this one here has a camera around it, whereas this one you can see it literally has the first second of the slide here. So you can see that's a, you know, the beginning of that particular video. What's happening here is this is being uploaded now and it's converting it into the Kaltura format. And this is all happening behind the scenes, so we don't have to worry about it. I could sit here and wait and every so often refresh to see if it's finished uploading, but that's you don't need to do that. You can actually use this video at least to get it into your course right now. So we're not going to wait. We're just going to let it convert on its own in the background. And what I want to do is I'm going to select this particular video. And once I click on select, you'll see all of a sudden now the Canvas is doing a few things and my video appears here back on my page. 
And because it's still converting, it's still rendering itself within Kaltura, it says no source video was found dash entry in process. And that's fine because as soon as Kaltura finishes preparing my video, it'll automatically appear there and the error message will go away. In fact, by the time we finish recording this video, that's likely to have happened. So now you'll see my video is there. My text is above it. My cursor is right here. So I'm just going to click enter so that I'm on the next line underneath it. And then I would always recommend that you add some more text here. Um, essentially what you want to do is what you want the students to take away from the video. Right? So again, imagine if you were in a class and, and you know, you've just watched the video and you may or may not have had some discussion or questions about it in class. You know, this is kind of the last thing that you would say before you move on to that next topic that you want to cover in that particular class or that next activity that you happen to be doing. You know, this is the thing that you want to stress from the, the, the video that, you know, if the students forgot everything about the video but, you know, these one or two or three things, what would those X number of things be? That's what you want to put here in this text immediately underneath the video. And then when you are done that, all you need to do is, if you're ready to use the, the page, you can click Save and Publish. Or if you just want to leave it for a while so that you can come back to it. And in our case, because I'm just creating a temporary file here, I'm just going to click Save. Um, and again, remember that as long as it's saved, the students won't be able to see it. But as soon as the video is saved and published, or if I wanted to just click Publish right here, then the students will be able to see it. So I'm just going to hit Refresh here a few times and probably pause the video while we wait for the video to be fully rendered by Kaltura so you can see what it would look like in its final form. So as you can see I just hit refresh once again or reload and it just popped up. It took about six minutes although I had the video paused so that you uh, didn't have to wait the full six minutes with me. So our video has now been embedded and you can see if I were to click on the play here or the play here, the video starts. And there's a couple of features in here. You can see right now it's just playing in the box that is the default box. If I wanted to make that the full screen, I can just click on this button right here next to the Kaltura logo and it would allow me to increase the size so that it makes it much bigger for the students Well, it takes up the full screen. Uh, if I wanted to allow the students to download it, they would click on this button here. And if they wanted to slow down or speed up the pace of the video, they would just click on this and it gives them some options to allow that to happen. So this has been a quick little video showing you how you can both upload videos to your Kaltura account and then embed those videos into a page within the Canvas Learning Management System.